Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Now Bali podcast with me, Eddie Spears. Thanks again for joining us. Firstly, if you're listening on Spotify, this is a video podcast episode and this is quite a visual episode, so I highly recommend you watching on the video, otherwise you can also catch it on YouTube. Today I'll be joined by two guests who have recently published Masks of Bali, Between Heaven and Hell. This two-volume set of books is the first complete study of the origins, history, and living legacy of Balinese mask dance, an ancient performance art that has existed for over a thousand years. It contains more than 600 masks, many of which are rare and unpublished, which were diligently sourced over a period of four years from temples, museums, and private collections around the world. Beautifully designed and painstakingly researched by a team of experts, Masks of Bali marks a major contribution to the study of Balinese art and culture. The authors of this milestone publication are joining me today, and they are Professor Dr. E. Made Bandam, considered a world authority on Balinese dance and drama. Born into an illustrious family of mask dancers in Singapore, Bali, Bandam's dancing talents were recognized at an early age. He furthered this knowledge in the field and received a master's degree at UCLA and PhD in musicology at Wesleyan University. Before returning to Indonesia, where he was appointed the rector of National Institute of the Arts in Yogyakarta and director of the Indonesian College of the Arts in Denpasar. Together with Professor Dr. Ida Bagusmantra, a previous governor of Bali, Pat Bandam is among the founding fathers and driving force behind the Bali Arts Festival. In 2022, he was presented with a UNESCO award as a representative of Indonesia's intangible cultural heritage. Also joining us is Bruce W. Carpenter, co-author of Masks of Bali. Uh, he is an Anglo-American art historian with more than 20 volumes of publications on the arts and culture of Indonesia. He has also curated several museum exhibitions and has played a key role in the multiple cultural projects around the country. He has a determination to produce large and important books on long neglected art forms across this nation. Together with Pat Bandam and others, he is working tirelessly to preserve and promote Indonesian and Balinese art. We get straight into the discussion, so I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Firstly, a very warm welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for your time um, and, and being here and joining us for the Now Bali podcast. And number two, a huge congratulations for the publishing of an epic, epic two-volume collection, Masks of Bali Between Heaven and Hell. Probably one of the most pivotal moments in this field. Uh, sh and just to share some amazing facts about this new book, it took four years to complete, 600 masks were recorded, 1,000 different images, including masks never before photographed, and of course, in-depth information from the both of you about the entire field of masks, the genres, individual types, mask makers, and dancers. So very valuable to the preservation of art. Um, before we sort of get into the nitty-gritty of what your... Uh, book includes. I'd like to go sort of wider before we get into Bali. And Pa uh, Bruce heard you talk about this before about just masks for human society and that they've had a part of human history for so long. Um, I, I've heard you mention Joseph Campbell's Mask of God. So maybe can you share a little bit about that and the importance of masks just to just to humanity. The earliest images of humans wearing masks are found in cave paintings, which date back 20, 30,000, 35,000 years old, and they're shamans. And the mask is a liberating uh, tool in that it allows humans to be something else. They can be a god, they can be a spirit, they can be an animal, they can, they can be a monster. They can be a hero. And, uh, and that allows them to move into the realm of the sacred. 
right? So you do find that all over the world. And, uh, and if you see here in, in Bali, it's a tradition, okay, if you talk about, in fact, Balinese masks come from, masks come from three different sources. One of them is the exorcistic, meaning you drive away uh, uh, evil spirits, you protect your community, the individual, and so on. You also include that. You have what you call disease masks, so, so that drive out, out disease. The second type is, is like the barong mask, the lion, which belongs to a group of mask dancers known as the lion dancers. They're found wherever Vajrayana Buddhism was. This was an inc incredible form of Buddhism that developed in northern India from the 7th to 11th century and then spread around the world to Japan, China, and Indonesia as, 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 as well. And then the third type of the, uh, are the history masks, the Lakon masks, you know, that tell, uh, they recite the history, the origins and things like that. And the earliest uh, evidence we have of them being performed both in Java and in Bali are in old bronze uh, inscriptions which date back to, to, the, to the ninth century. Uh, you mentioned these exorcism masks, which uh, the, the second two, the storytelling and also the lion dances, they sound like sort of imports, but these exorcism masks and the fact that, you know, humanity has used masks throughout um, history, were these were, were the exorcism, exorcism masks imports, or was that something that indigenous populations here in Bali just just did? Well, a lot of things that that you know anthropologists and historians talk about all the time. It's sort of a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Uh, you know, uh, there's the theory of diffusion that a certain a kind of uh, uh, development somewhere came popular and spread around the world. The other ones is that it's indigenous in, in the development of societies and people. Uh, I think there's a combination of, of, of both, and, but if you talk about this, that the, the, people of, uh, the people of Indonesia, which are, are either of the Papua type or, or the Austronesians, which, who came much, much later, is that they were animists and they were they were they believed in the spirit world and things like that, and we still see that in the various tribal and um, uh, and minority ethnic groups, for instance, the Dayak people, the people in Timor, and so on, that they can continue, continue on in that tradition, and we can draw some parallels between some of those traditions, like the Hudak masks of the of the Kayanic people of, of, of Borneo, and the Rangda, uh, Rangda masks, you know, also the jungle masks and things like that. Uh, so today, you know, if you talk, because Patmade's strength is in the contemporary, particularly the living, the living traditions, mm -hmm. and uh, there's been a merger between all these different mass types of mass, in which they've 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 joined together into new forms. So part of part of what we did with the history is you want to untwine it. Uh, you know, you want to, you take this bubble and it has to do too with, with the thing that I also talked about in the book, in my essay, in the book on, on the drawings of Lempod, is that everybody talks about, oh, Bali, Bali's a Hindu island, mm -hmm. you know, and you say, well, Hinduism, where's that from? Mm -hmm. You know, where's it from? From India? Yeah. From mm -hmm. India. Okay. And then nobody really explains you what that means. Well, how did it sort of get here? With a boat of Indians that came over from Calcutta, you know, and sort of said, "Oh, we're going to, it's a nice island. We're going to make it." So, so it's it's sort of understanding how things moved at 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 which which time, and uh, you know. But again, you know, if we talk about Balinese uh, uh, dance traditions, though their influence is from the outside. There were certainly indigenous traditions that existed here. And like everywhere in the world, what really makes uh, uh, an art belong to the people is when they integrate it into their own society, make it relevant to them, and that sense it's something, something new. Yeah. And 
in in this book you, you've used all of your research and and you've identified nine different genres of of these masks that have essentially sort of uh, create the tapestry of masks of Bali. Um, uh, Babandam, do you mind sharing a little bit about these nine genres? So you have three traditions, exorcism, mask, line dance, and then the storytelling or historic. And then you have these nine genres of Balinese masks, uh, which are identified in the book. That's true. Uh, when we speak about a genre in Balinese masks today that we find today, still alive today, uh, we identify the genre through of course, uh, iconography of the mask itself. We have so many different masks in Bali. We try to make a classification through the iconography of the mask itself. When we speak about iconography, we speak about the laksana. Laksana is attribute of the mask itself because different masks has a different attribute uh, of the mask itself. I can show you a little on a little bit about that. And the second, secondly, we speak about the aesthetic of the mask itself. So different masks, different genre will have also different aesthetic in this case. The proportional, the size of the mask, and the, the teeth they have, like all of those aesthetic and the colors most important uh, when we speak about aesthetic in the mask itself. And then, of course, at, and later on, the third part of this uh, iconography, we speak about expression of mass. Yeah, yeah. Expression of we have different kinds. Bruce already speaking about you know, rando mass, baron mass. It is a giant mass and all creating trance and everything like that. Uh, expression is very important in the mass itself. Mm -hmm. And then after that one, uh, that's the iconography, very important. And the secondly, when the the mass performing as a dance drama or dramatic dramatic form, and they have story in it whether they're using the story of Ramayana, Mahabharata, or other le uh, legend in Bali, history, colonial uh, history in Bali, all have different, uh, different masks. You can identify the genre through the story they use. And of course, when they perform, masks using costume, not only masks by itself, but also headdresses and also the costume, or different costume, or giving you the different idea of the genre of the mask like that. And then, of course, later on, when they uh, perform, they speak, you know, king speaking in old Javanese, old Javanese Kawi language, and then the Balinese uh, clown speaking about Balinese, vernacular Balinese. You can identify all the form like that. Like that. So there are many different ways of uh, describing the genre of mass in Bali in this case. Can I show you uh, one mass when we can speak about the iconography of this mass? We love that. Right? Okay. So this mask is uh, Wayang Wong mask. This is uh, the dance drama known as Wayang Wong. This is a monkey, uh, uh, monkey mask because this Wayang Wong's uh, mask taking the story from Ramayana, very famous epics from Indian epics, but also transformed into Indonesian Kakawin in this case. Okay, and this, this is a hero, you know, hero messenger known as uh, Hanuman, right? powerful mass, mythological monkey in this case. Yeah? When we speak about iconography of the mass, and first we have to speak about the attribute of the mass. Okay? And this one uh, is called skartaji. Many monkey mass, many barong mass, usually have this skartaji to separate uh, the mass and the costume in the back like this. But in this skartaji, they have a different design already. Here you see a design of the uh, design of tumbu tumbuhan, uh, design of the uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, um, uh, a design of the burung, for example. This is a wing, looking up the wing over here. Right. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. Or yeah. different. Uh, it's a, it's a, a life things, you know, growth in the garden and, and yeah, and, that's and, a, the effluent, uh, the fl effluent, yeah, yeah. tumbuhan, yeah, or how do you say tumbuhan in English? That is a tumbuhan and growth. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, something you know, growth. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Okay, and then after this one, you see this mass uh, using the urna here. The urna is different than the other mass. 
Sometimes only one urna here, and with, but this one is taken from the jet kakul, keong. Keong is a snail kind of thing. And then for here they have the tanduk of the uh, tanduk of the uh, kakul in this case. Yeah, it's okay. a sort of third eye that uh, shows eyes. spiritual uh, mm -hmm. spiritual power. And that's taken the the, the imagery of a snail. Uh, is that for this one? Yeah. The, the design look like it's the more snail. it's not that they're saying that it's a snail what mm -hmm. they're saying is that it looks a, like, like a snail, snail. Yeah, so they, they call they, it they a snail. from there yeah uh, and then of course here uh, as a monkey mess they have a ear here but they have also the rooming rooming mm -hmm. is earring you know so you can imagine in this in you know, a monkey has a ornate or ornament using the uh, rooming as a mythological animals in this case, and not like the monkey that you see in the garden and you see in the, the uh, mountains. So they, but this is more like a mythological character in this case. Of course, this is uh, very important here. The teeth, mm. yeah, the teeth uh, of mass uh, of the monkey here will be different than the giant, for example. Monkey always have four fang, yeah, four fang. But sometimes giant they have only two fang like this yeah you can di discern you can uh, identify and you can you know about this two different characters through the fang itself so this this uh, uh, what do you call this teeth they're showing only six six teeth uh, six teeth uh, one two three four five six mm -hmm. there's a symbol also in Balinese life it's called sadripu mm -hmm. enemy in your in yourself you have enemy real enemy in yourself just like uh, Greedy, for example, kama, loba, greedy, and then uh, anger, anger, you know, all of this enemy. Ragu, ragu, that means uh, dubious in life, yeah, yeah? ragu, yeah. ragu. So if you can win against this six sadripu, this is the real good life for you. But it has also symbol like that in this kind of uh, mass that you have. So through uh, iconography of different mass, and then you know the gender of this mass. How common is it, Pabandam, for masks? I mean, that's a very ornate mask of Hanuman. But how common is it for all the masks to have that level of symbolism in their appearance? Yeah, of course, you know, like this mask, it's a king mask, different than the monkey mask. Mm -hmm. This is more humanized, like a god, humanized god, and then uh, Prangsan as a king. In this case, you see the different uh, eyes form. That's one of bulging eyes, and this is more uh, like, uh, you know, smaller eyes, almond shaped eyes like this. But still the, the teeth also look uh, the same kind of idea of Sadripu or for here in this case. But the urna here, only one. You know, the third eye just look like a Siva eye, the third eyes of Siva. Mm -hmm. And here also has a different, uh, uh, different way of making the, the Gidat, the, the, what do you call this? This is the... Uh, Hairline. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so different. Yeah. So yeah. through different, this kind of uh, iconography, you can differentiate. This is a refined king. Yeah, this is a refined king. You see already the iconography of this one. But when I s show you this one, this is more like a strong character. This is refined character. This is a more strong, <laughs> you know, bulging, more bulging eyes. It has a different expression to show it more strong character. Mm -hmm. some, uh, Sometimes a, a buffoon and funny character, but it's a strong minister or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. Very clearly, very clear in this case when we can, uh, then uh, finally we can, we were able to classify the nine expression, the nine iconography of the mass. We begin with a mask called Brutuk, right? Mm -hmm. Bruce yeah. Brutuk. He speak about uh, megalithic culture in Bali. There's a village in Trunyan village in Bangli. There's a four years, uh, four meter statue there, where he talks called puncturing, called they were puncturing jagat in this case. This is like a megalithic uh, uh, megalithic statue in Bali, yeah, made of stone, stone pada stone, and and then this uh, statue as a megalithic culture of Bali. It has 21 unen unen. Unen unen is the guardian. Unen unen is uh, also, well, aside from guardian, there's also uh, people to help, you know, pengawal, you know, guardian. So this is called brutuk. Mm -hmm. The mass of brutuk, it is uh, simple in form, you know, made of uh, coconut, uh, what's called that? A coconut. Yeah. 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 
It's very, yeah. it's very rough. It's, it's, you know, when, when the Westerners first saw it, they right away associated it with more tribal African yeah. sort of thing. The other thing is that the costumes are made, like the Hudak masks of the Dayak people, they're made of dried banana leaves. Yeah, bananas, right? like that. And have a, and it's very it's 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 very very rough going. Yeah. Go ahead, go on. Yeah. The brutuk the mass, uh, if you see, you can compare to a uh, mass of Dayak, of course, yeah, Udok in Dayak, and then also mass of Sumatra, uh, mass of Celebes, you know, some also mass like in Mapua that we find today, more like a primitive types of mass, yeah, comparing yeah. other new mass. This that I have this described already. So we have uh, the nine center. First, we call Brutuk, and then of course later on we have Barong. Yeah, we we discuss a bit of Barong. There's so many Barong in Bali. Barong cat, Barong uh, yeah, Barong cat, Barong kijang, bar elephant Barong, and so on. So many types of them. You can see always when they, when there's a galungan time, they they perform on the street and they perform in the villages and you know, all the different Barong they have. And one particular. Uh, Unique barong is called barong landung, right? Yeah. Barong landung. This is <coughs> a symbol, actually, uh, communication uh, relationship between China and Bali because mm -hmm. they are using the story of the uh, King Jayapangus and Kang Chengwi from China. So now the famous called barong landung in this case, yeah. Uh, and then we have also other barong. Sorry, Pak Banam, I just wanted to ask between because barong landung. Um, if for those who don't know, it's it's placed upon the body uh, as like um, sort of more of a puppet, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but the form is very different from the barong that we see because they're very human-like, the barong landung. But then the other barongs yeah. are two with two with people two person, and they look like yeah. animals. So yeah. they're zoomorphic and then um, animals. Well, bar barong, the terminology of barong, the name of barong actually probably came up. Uh, Later, mm -hmm. and it's applied like like with the barong ket, which is you know a, a a type of lion dance. It's applied to especially to sacred masks because the barong landung is also sacred, sacred masks, mask, yeah, yeah. right? In fact, mm -hmm. it also harkens back to to the the more tribal societies, and it has to do with because a lot of the dances in tribal societies and and small ethnic groups have to do with harvest festivals. Mm -hmm. Right, and they're also uh, so it's the and also some of them after the harvest. That's when head hunting and things are, are 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 done, and the and it has to do with fertility, because the oh. barong landung what they after the end of, of the of the galungan kuningan festival they come out. They used to you used to see them many many different places. It's become less common now nowadays, and they would they were would walk around sometimes with their their children mm -hmm. and with uh, with other accompany uh, them, and they stop every once in a while. They have a, a gamelan that accompany them, and then they they sing poetry. But the poetry is a bit like limericks, and they're all naughty. They all have uh, mm -hmm. sexual undertones and and things like that. And then after they finish a couplet, you know, there's a, it's it's like six lines or so. On. They all guffaw with 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 laughter, and then they spin around, kind of enjoy with joy before they move on to the next place. But it's a kind of it's a protective ritual uh, for, for, uh, fertility right of its own. Because Barong Landung it has a story actually, story, and this is part of the history mm -hmm. of Bali. At the 12th century, there was a king known as Jaya Pangus. So from the uh, palace called Balingkang, near Kintomani, they said Batur in this case. And then this king uh, wanted to marry somebody, right? And then finally, uh, he proposed a girl, Chinese girl, who was who was the a daughter of merchants in, in Kintamani and Batur like that. And they got married. Right? After a few years got married, uh, uh, they don't have any children. Kang Chengwi and uh, Jaya Pangus never have any children. Mm -hmm. Then finally, the uh, Jaya Pangus decided to do a meditation down in Danau Batur, in the lake of Batur like that, and while uh, Kang Chengwi still stay present in the palace itself, 
And after, after a few years also doing meditation, uh, Jaya Pangus never come back to the palace. Finally, he, he got in love with other girl down in Danau Batur, known as Dewi Batur, like that. So finally, and then Kang Cheng Wee came to see what happening, the love scene and everything like that. And uh, Kang Cheng Wee, of course, got mad, right? Got mad. And then finally, the mother of Dewi Batur, yeah, the mother of Dewi Batur came down, knowing uh, that... Uh, she was the goddess of the lake. Yeah, she, uh, goddess of the lake. And then uh, Kang, uh, the, the king, uh, Jaya Pangus, already got married, but he never told yeah, the, the, the girl that she got married, finally. That, that my, the gods of uh, Devi Batur, the gods of uh, the mother of Devi Batur, got so mad and punished them. And they, they pralino them. Uh, pralino meaning, this can, they burned them. Mm. Right? But because Kang Ching Wee and family has a contribution of the life in Batur and uh, in, in Kintamani, you know, to, uh, to make the, the life better. And then, uh, so finally, the people of Batur making two barong landung, mm -hmm. small barong landung. One is a uh, symbol of the uh, king of Jaya Pangus and the other is Kang Ching Wee. So there's a merge, uh, you know, uh, a connection, a relationship between Balinese and Chinese people in creating the fertility and creating of the the kekayaan yeah all of the Balinese Posterity. yeah, yeah. Uh, fertility yeah. and also uh, of the Balinese people mm -hmm. so therefore they make them later on become bar barong landung yeah the yeah. two bar uh, uh, giant puppets actually in this case so uh, their story has been sort of immortalized um, and then symbolized uh, through these puppets. And, the, and giant puppets connected with fertility are found throughout in, the, in, 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 in the Indonesia. They're found in Sumatra, they're found in Java. You also have the, 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 the puppets in Jakarta, which may... On Mel, on Mel is it called? Yeah. They might Same. come from mm -hmm. Bali because there was a huge community of Balinese, the descendants of Balinese slaves in Jakarta. From the, from the 17th century. But to make two observations before letting uh, mm -hmm. Patmade go on with uh, saying the different names of the, of the mass, the first thing I wanted to say is that it's, it's, it's important to understand that every mask uh, requires uh, an, uh, an understanding we were talking about before, esoteric messages. Mm -hmm. Though, so for the audience, the Balinese audience, they, they know many of these things. Maybe some know mm -hmm. more and stuff. So they can recognize the characteristics or the typology or the archetype and other, other uh, elements of the expected behavior of them just by looking at the mask and the costume. Mm -hmm. Right, automatic association with a specific character. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's a whole science in itself that's extremely detailed. The other thing, which which is with the story of the Baron Landung, is the realization that virtually all these masks and the, and the performances are all tied to real places, such as the, such as the uh -huh. Danau Batur, the Batur Lake. And real historical people, they may have been, you know, uh, there's, there's layers of mythology and legends upon them, but at their heart, there's, there's a real story here. And this is the difference between if you look at uh, the Balinese view of history and the Western uh, view of history. In the West, you know, we usually... Uh, driven by dates and, 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 and sort of writing down very, very, very clear. It was only in the ancient times, like in the Greek times and so on, that things were mythologized. But on Bali, the, the, it's, it's mixed together. So part of the thing is learning how to read that, interpret that, so that it's clear to both both sides, and mm -hmm. you can go okay. on with some of the other dance yeah. types. Then we have also Barong Landung already, mm -hmm. and the fourth one that we have called Barong Kedingkling. Barong Kedingkling is only types of monkeys from the Baramayana. This is used for fertility also. They call ngelawang. Every galungan and kuningan day ceremony in Bali. So this kind of monkey, yeah, they, uh, they are coming to every houses mm -hmm. and they dancing, they performing, and sometimes they, sometimes they shake the, the trees, the mango, the mango trees or the coconut trees you know, to chase away the evil spirit like that. So called Barong Kedinkling. Mm -hmm. 
when this Baron Kenilke have his, his story, we put the story of Mahabharata or Ramayana, this kind of monk, different monkeys like Sugriwa, Hanoman, Angada, all different monkeys, putting now the story of Ramayana, including the king of Rama and Princess Devi Sita and the Laksmana and also the opponent, the villain is uh, Ravana or other giants, they called Wayang Wong. Wayang Wong, uh, there are two types of Wayang Wong, of course. One we using Ramayana story called Wayang Wong only, and the other called Wayang Parwa because the story is from Mahabharata or Parwa. So we have a complete structure, performances, music for this kind of Wayang Wong, and we still have a few villages now in Bali to have this Wayang Wong exist yeah, for ceremony, for ceremonial event and like that. Yeah. So in Tejakula we have that one, in Mas, and when, in, in Jemarana, all, all different parts of Bali we still have this kind of Wayang Wong. Mo yeah. yeah, mostly sacred. There are Most sacred, sacred masks objects. and some of them date mm. back very, very far. Mm. Very far and, uh, yeah. and so, uh, and, and and the Way Wayang Purwo has more Parwo. or less uh, gone extinct. Yeah. Right. There's still a couple of, uh, couple yeah, of uh, villages to do it, but it, less performance yeah, in this case. Far yeah, far less than ever. Because they don't have any mass, because only, only, only four uh, clowns to have a mass. So the expression is like uh, more like an Arjo or Prembon, like that. Yeah? yeah. Okay, we have that Wayang Wong. After Wayang Wong, we have very special sacred mass in a village called Blah Batu here. It's called Topeng Gajah Mada. Mm. Topeng Gajah Mada, you know already, yeah, the Gajah Mada is uh, famous prime minister of Mojapahit. So I think when, uh, when the king of Bali, his name was Batu Rengong, uh, sends a group to Java, to Blambangan, around 16th century already. So the fight between Blambangan and Bali, uh, and Pasuruan, of course, Blabang and Pasuruan, and then King Batu Rengong sent two prime minister to East Java, okay, to fight for, because I think why, why do they have uh, uh, fighting in this kind? Because uh, Batu Rengong was uh, proposing to marry to other uh, Daut, uh, not Naruto, is a sister of the king of Blambangan, but he was refused. Mm. Well, she, yeah, he was refused he to promised, marry. He promised, but he, yeah. didn't, he right. didn't fulfill his promise. Right, and that, yeah, they, right, they sent a, what? He uh, got sent, angry, the yeah, prince. He got angry, yeah. and then they sent uh, an emperor to Blambangan. So when they won the fight in Blambangan, they took two box back, two box back, and one gong, big gong, and also uh, they, they carry two box by uh, Partai Jilantik and, and Ularan, the two prime minister, and one of them is Topeng Gajah Mada. So that's a sacred uh, object uh, put uh, for a long time in Gel Gel Klungkung, in the, Gel -Gel, the palace of Batu Rengong and his uh, uh, gener generation later. And finally, uh, sometime around 18th century, nearly uh, 19th, 19th century, they took the mass into Blah Batu. It put that in Temple Penataran Topeng, and then now a uh, place in the uh, Palace of Blah Batu. This is the most sacred Topeng, and the most difficult, <laughs> most difficult time wondering. for yeah. us to get to be pictured. Actually, I, I'm part of the, the play with the Gajah Mada story in Blah Batu. Whenever they have performance for a sacred performance, they invited me to perform. But when we request for the books and to get a picture of this Gajah Mada, they always refuse to do it. Because, they're, they're, you know, there's taboos. It's taboos, you know, yeah. You, and, you know, and that's another thing with the sacred, because a lot of masks are sacred. Yeah. And even to take them out, out yeah. you have to do tremendous number of offerings. And they're expensive. Remember, you know, <laughs> uh, being Balinese and doing the rituals is, 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 is tough. A lot yeah. of work. There's a lot of expenses in, 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 involved with it. So, right? right. And yeah. the story, and I just uh, interject for that for a moment, we know the dates of these masks mm -hmm. because there was a lontar, so, so a palm leaf manuscript called book, Ularan where, Prasaya. Yeah. That mm -hmm. tells the story that dates from that period, the 16th century, that tells the story. We tell the fuller story because it doesn't go on uh, after what happened and when it came back. Go ahead. Okay, so our deal is with the king of Bla, uh, king of Blabato presently. He's a very young man, actually, very nice man and very, you know, very helpful also. 
uh, for a few times we came and then they always refused us because of the sacredness and also the taboo, right? But we have a deal actually because uh, this mass has been pictured, you know, taken picture already around 1937, mm. yeah, for a book. Yeah, it was yeah. one in 1934, and a then, Japanese uh, oh, photographer, Japanese Satake, Satake, yeah, Satake. And then, then mm -hmm. 1940 by Colin McPhee. For, and then, for, yeah, and then uh, they published an article by uh, Nusten, right? Nusten, uh, exactly. So they don't know actually the full name of the mass because when speak of Gajah Mada, only one character. Mm -hmm. But in Blabato, they have probably 21 characters altogether. They don't know really the the names of other so characters, individual mass, individual mass and characters. Because we read article and we know the, the person who gave the information about the name of the mass, it was the Pungawa from Blabatu. One of the family Pungawa of Blabatu in 1937 gave them the name of the mass and, and published in Holland. Yeah. <laughs> published in Holland. So we deal with them too. So, uh, you know, we're telling them that we know the name, and then now they begin one by one giving the name of the Gajah Mada mass like that. So you and have a mutual, mutually beneficial mutually exchange for information. So a photograph Ex for the names of quid the, pro of the quo. Yeah, so we do that. You know. I don't know how do you say that in Balinese, quid pro quo. Yeah, yeah. So finally we got it, you know, <laughs> part of, uh, we would like to also to continue to have a good relationship with this Topeng, Gajah Mada and Blah Batu, yeah? even though I perform all, all the time with them. And after the Gajah Mada Blah Batu, and they have another uh, genre of Topeng, it's called Topeng Bidadari. Mm. This is from Tetewel. This is another funny story too. Yeah. We came a couple of times, for big ceremony, asking the Pemangku, the owner of the Pemangku Gede, the leader of the Puro Yogan Agung Ketewel's temple, right? She was the leader and he was the priest. And we asking them to, to have a picture and photo of this uh, Bidadari mass uh, for the books. They always refuse it. Again, even though I'm performing with them, of other mass from, from Yogan Agung, they don't leave us. After a few times, right? There's a big story. They have big ceremony in Ketewel known as uh, Pancha Walikrama. This, this ceremony will uh, happening only in 45 years. Wow. 45 years ceremony, once, right? And for this first Pancha, Pancha Walikrama uh, ceremony they have in Ketewel, they want to have everything new. The building new, the barong has to be repented, right? All the Pratima also has to be repented again. And Temple statues, Pratima. Yeah. And then finally, they also wanted to uh, repenting the mass. This is old mass, as old as Gajah Mada mass. Mass also yeah. is called Pidadari, you know, like that. And we were lucky. If, even though I and Pak Bruce and also Chokordo Oke Artana, the vice governor of Bali, came to the, the, the people at uh, Ketewel before they pay, repaint the mass. We don't want them to repaint the mass because this is original, asli, you know, old mass, you know. So treasure, why we have to repaint it for a new color? But they refused my advice. Finally, the day before they repaint this mass, they call us. Yeah, it's like in the middle of the night, right. you get a phone call. Green light, green, green light. light. Now or never, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. or never, come yeah. tomorrow or Because the next chance will be in 45 Five years. years. And yet that's so. a new painting, right? Yeah. yeah, you don't have the original sort of shade after, right. after that. And then amazing, of the, uh, on the death the same day, a priest already uh, performing the offering because they have to, to praliner, to, what do you call, to kill, to, to move the souls of the mass into of, an offering, right? Mm -hmm. After that one, we so do. So sacred, th sacred things also, mm -hmm. when you talk about taksu, the, the Balinese word for sacred, taksu, yeah. sacred energy, it's both good and bad. And, that, and so they're dangerous, magically dangerous, so that you need to kill it yeah, first. Too. And then you, you re-sanctify and you re-empower it uh, later. So. Uh -huh. They move the soul into the offerings like that. Right? And they then the, um, begin with the padanda, the priest, uh, to do uh, an activity known as ngrua. 
you know, how, how do you get that script scripting? That, yeah, script that, right? But we wanted them to script a little bit by bit, yeah. Yeah. Just only symbol, you know, not not the whole mass, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And that after that one, oh, on this doing this uh, scripting the mass, we need three. Uh, what do you call that? What three three? Not three generation, three cast, right? The three cast. One supposed to be Brahmana to do first, the priest to do first, oh, the and then the second must be like a king family, mm. right? Yeah. And then the third one, uh, Jabo. Jabo mean outsider, you know. The the the, the, the non royal the non royal family, non royal family. So in in Katawel, they already have they already have the pemangku, the priest, but the pemangku itself still requesting a professor to be part of it. <laughs> Doesn't mean yeah. that Made Bandam was yeah. given a chance yeah, to do. Yeah, make sure they have the academic credentials <laughs> no, as well. Like that, like that. We were so lucky, right? Yeah. Oh, so wow. finally, we have the yeah. original and uh, you know um, uh, mass of that one. If you didn't have this opportunity, what would you have done? Would you just left it out of the book, essentially? Well, you were still you were still allowed to make photos of the of the, of performance dancing the, the performance mask, when they perform the, the masks, right. right? Yeah. But part of it is is that you know we've we've included a fair number of them, is that you learn a lot about the mask from looking at the backside, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And and one of the one of the signs of a mask being truly old is that they have this a wooden wooden extension on the inside because in the mm-hmm. in the early periods. Dancers held the masks in their mouths. No, it yeah. wasn't tied onto the heads, mm-hmm. and that's called changam. Yeah, yeah, that's called, it's it's called changam, yeah. right? You yeah. bite it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe there's a reason in Mojopai time. Yeah. So I when see. you perform a mask in front of the king, in front of the princess and queen, you don't have to speak bad about yeah. it. <laughs> So these, yeah, it's not a bit quiet like that. So, so, so these, the, yeah, exactly. And, the, and these masks depict uh, apsara. Sap, apsara are a celestial race of beautiful dancers and musicians, both to the Buddhist and to the Hindu Hindu world. And uh, many of them play roles in various uh, stories in the in the Hindu tales and. And uh, you know there, there's one, the Raja Pala, in mm-hmm. which there was a Balinese prince, and one day he was wandering Steel. through the jungle, and saw this beautiful uh, glen, and and a waterfall, and these these seven or eight uh, and nine masks, nine nine, 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 nine celestial celestial, made, made, celestial yeah. apsara bathing naked there, and he was like. Like totally, uh, you know, mm-hmm. over overwhelmed with, with with love, and then he snuck out and stole Still the one, clothes yeah. of one of them. Mm. Yeah. Right. So the, the bidadari called Ken Sulase in this case. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when and those clothes obviously gave her some kind of power so that she could, you know, go fly back, 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 fly to back, back yeah. to to the celestial Heaven, abodes, yeah. right? <laughs> And enter came the gods and all the the celestial beings, the other ones, and 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 she begged and begged for him to return the clothes. He said, "Only if you marry me." Mm. Well, when yeah, and so in the end, she she acceded, but she asked one uh, one promise, right? Yeah, yeah, one promise, which was which which was, yeah, which was that uh, when. Uh, you have one uh, son or daughter, then can she can return back to the heaven in this case. Yeah. Finally, yeah. they both yeah. uh, uh, they both uh, stay for a few years, and then finally they get a, a son. His name is uh, uh, Dharma. Yeah, his name is uh, yeah. I forgot the name of this one. Uh, yeah, they have one son, and then finally the girl, the, the girl, the celestial maiden, the Kensulase, go back to. Uh, to heaven again. Yeah, she said, you broke your you broke your promise. Promise, yeah. And therefore, I'm returning back. So, okay. So, so we have already uh, yeah. Bedadari yeah, mass, Bedadari, uh, Bedadari mass, and then, of course, now we talk about the historical mass, the uh, Topeng Babad. Topeng Babad is the um, historical mass uh, because they use uh, the story 
as a content of the, the performances, the theme of the performances uh, from the Babad, Babad is Chronicles, uh, and then also the history. Babad yeah, means history. It's history, yeah. Yeah. and then they have two t types of uh, performance of Topeng Babad. One is called Topeng Pajagan, so uh, one actor performing uh, maybe six to twelve mass at once, right? And then the second one is Topeng Pancha, uh, five performers originally to form all different story, all different history in the life of Balinese people like this one. So with this two uh, uh, form of two genre of the Topeng, that means Babad and Pancha. Topeng Babad is important one because it has uh, wali function, it has a, a sacred function because it has a character known as Topeng Siddhakarya. Can I have? Uh. Yeah. Topeng Siddhakarya. See, this is Topeng Siddhakarya, the one who do the job for a ceremony, function as a priest. When priest performing the offering, right, but this uh, dance come and say they finish together to, to complete the, the ceremony. So complete ceremony of the job. She give the job completing the ceremony, big ceremony, whatever is this one. So this one, very important character. It has a long story also, yeah, long story also. Uh, okay. You can read it in the book. We yeah, yeah, book. yeah, that's all, all is about, but also books, a book like that, okay. That's all about the genre, the topeng that, that we have. But now the popular in Bali, when they call topeng, usually they refer to topeng uh, baba and topeng pancha. We didn't discuss about the words topeng, right, Pak Bruce? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Sure. Because, yeah, uh, the word topeng, T-O-P-N-E-N-G, this is Indonesian word, but also Balinese word, actually. So the word topengs uh, come from the word tup, T-U-P. Uh, tup, uh, they add suffix ang, becoming yeah. tupeng. Because of the you know, change of pronunciation, they're becoming topeng. This is yeah. something to press, yeah. Yeah, it covers. Press to something tup. covered. To oh, the face, yeah. To tup, yeah. the face, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes now they make up, they call also topeng, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, we, uh, Bruce always talk about that the topeng is a symbol of ancestor. A symbol of history, king and raja, symbol of sub god, symbol of celestial maiden, right? So, you know, they, you put the press with this thing, and then you become another character in this case. Exactly, because that's an, another important thing it's to understand is that in the in in the sacred dances in these dances, once the dancer puts on the mask, it's actually in the process. They're no longer. Um, Made Bandam, yeah. they become the actual character. Right. Right. I will, I will give you some illustration yeah. later on because very important words called transformation when study about mass. Let's come back to uh, what Pak Bruce said about the, in the back of this mass. Yeah? We can show this one. This is uh, a really sacred writing because this mass made by a priest from Tegal Tamu. Yeah, we visited them already there, but he passed away already. Either Padanda uh, Penate, his name, and he made this mass, and this mass given to my father. Yeah, to my father, now a legacy of me, and using this mass also. But in the back of the mass, they all write something, many different things actually. One mass uh, from Kelungkung, the red mass, uh, uh, this one. This is a gift from the king of Kelungkung, they were Pade Gug, his name, right? And he, he writes something in the back of the mass, not only the name of the character, right, name of the character, they say Deling Manis character, uh, prime minister, but sweet prime minister, but he also include here the way how to repaint it, oh. the color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you make the coloring of this mass, yeah, they have a formula behind it, you know. Mm. You cannot go beyond that one. They already give you some idea about that. Different than this one, because this is uh, given by the priest. First, he write his name here. Yeah, his name here, Ida Padanda Gede uh, uh, Pati, uh, Pinatih Agung. This is his name over here. From Tegal Tamu. And then, aside from that one, because he's speaking about Taksu, power, Pasupati, he writes something here, uh, the sacred words called Modre over here. 
modre for you. In the, because word chaksu mean in Sanskrit world is called eyes actually. Sinar eyes. What you call, uh, uh, light coming out of your light, eyes. Light. You, have, you have that magical, magical eye that, uh, that, that, it, that radiates from your yeah, eyes. Wrong. It's like, rain, it's like yeah. Superman's powers. Yeah. To, to right. So coming, see right <coughs> over here, the two sacred words over here called modre in this case. This what create the power, the pasupati, the charming when you perform this one, right? Mm -hmm. And then here, oh, he, he, he even more coming into the philosophy of light. Male, uh, male and female, ang and ah. If you can combine the two words ang and ah, so become powerful man. There's a symbol of sakti and God. You know? yeah. So all of things you can learn something from, uh, from the writing behind the mass like this. Mm -hmm. So many mass we found in Jakarta, in the Museum of Jakarta. We discuss about uh, Panji mass, right? And we finally we found one mass called Panji. Maybe this king of Panji, maybe not, or maybe not the the hero of Panji. Well, we don't know. But we have to discuss uh, for next writing. Because uh, <laughs> another thing is I, what 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 has happened in in the twentieth century, and this is not just in mass dance, but it has to do with with with, uh, with depictions. Is that the, the extraordinary breath, almost a stunning? Like, a, for instance, there's a, there's a story of Rangalawe, which is of Shakespearean dimensions and and and, and a tragedy, you know, having to yeah. do with betrayal and redemption and other things like that. That many of these stories, because they're complex and they're difficult. Uh, or, or not really being uh, not being played anymore, and they're not they're not being illustrated mm -hmm. anymore, and there's a kind of reduction that's going on, particularly to the Ramayana, and the Rayama, Ramayana, mm -hmm. and that has to do with Western influence. They say, oh, it's a love story. It's you know, yeah, Prince Panji. Rama is in love mm -hmm. with Sita, and the bad guy Rawana comes and steals her way, and he has the the, the white monkey Hanuman mm -hmm. comes and they defeat bad, and then good triumphs over evil. The actual story, which is is it's like over nine nine hundred pages long, mm -hmm. with hundreds of side stories is a, quite a bit more complex. And it's not really a love story. It's a story about the necessity, the demand, that everybody live according mm -hmm. to their dharma. The dharma being, being, it, being what would be said that your innate right, uh, quality and not being some, something else, discovering what that is and becoming becoming that, and that's true mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, a lot of these things. And as for the whole idea of good versus bad, mm -hmm. in Hindu in Buddhist society, particularly, that's why the offerings are given given to the to the rakshasa, the demons, and things like that. It's not it's not like in the Christian story that in the end, uh, you know. Uh, God comes down and drives away all the bad people, and then we all float around in diaphanous robes, singing singing hymns to the end of the, of all time, and so on. It's about achieving a balance. They recognize uh, the good and the bad of being the two sides of the same reality. And without them, I had a high priest in in Dawan one time, and he said to me, "Well, if you don't have black, how do you know what white is?" Mm -hmm. exactly. So this white. You like know. the Rubinator. Yeah, Coming back so. to speaking about Dharma, when you're learning also Topeng, there's a book called Dharma Petopengan. There's a guideline how to learn Topeng, spiritually and also technically, actually. It's called Dharma Petopengan. When you learn Balinese classical then known as Gambu, there's also uh, Dharma Pegambuhan, a guideline about how to, to study about classical dancing, spiritually and also technically. Also learning music in Bali, they already written about the Dharma uh, music, it's called Aji Gurnito or Prakampo. All technical aspect and spiritual aspect are written, but in, you know, in a simple manner, in a simple way. Not so descriptive, not analysis, but very simple way of writing about Dharma Petopengan. 
when I learned Topeng from my father, I was about probably 16 years old, already in high school during that time. Uh, first, before you touch Topeng, or before you learn uh, to do Balinese dancing, a good Balinese dancing, a good Balinese Topeng, he said to me, you have to be a good person first. A good person. Make yourself a good person. That means you have to give, have a good behavior yeah, when you want to perform dance or you perform dancing. Better to make your, 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 yourself as a good person first. So uh, when he speak about good person, uh, in Bali there's a concept, like speak about uh, good and evil. Now it's concept of three kayo parishuddha, three things you have to learn before you're learning the dancing. First, it's called uh, uh, three kayo parishuddha, manachika. Yeah, manachika, think well. Yeah, think well, think deeply, learn the ritual, learn of the spiritual aspect of the mass. Okay, that's called manachika. You have a real um, uh, pemikiran, ya, yeah? pemikiran yang bagus. And then secondly, wachika. They say, talk well, respect people, you know. Talk well, respect people, you know. Helping people, tolerance and everything, right? And the third one is called uh, kayika. And then you act well. So when you become a good person and you understanding about the, the philosophy and concept of this Dharma Patopengan, then you begin to learn. Nah, before even starting the movement, the vocabulary movement in the, in the Topeng dance drama, because they always have a uh, vocabulary movement in every dancing in Bali, like standing position, and then walking style, and then the transition movement, then expression, transformation, and, and, and others. Uh, my father asked me, uh, mm, you have to sleep with your mass. <laughs> yeah, you have to sleep with your mass. You know, because learning mass, mass sometimes already have the power of taksu or pasupati, because when they make a mass for dancing, mass for, for God, something like that, and they already have a, a ritual procession, ritual uh, steps to do it, starting from the uh, cutting the tree they have offering already, and they're starting to carve the mass, they have some offering. You know, all of those process go through of the mass, and when the mass finish, they have also given the taksu or pasupati. They even go to the temple to get the power, you know, spirit to get into the mass. So the mass become powerful in this case. Because of that, you know, uh, when you learn topeng pajagan or topeng panja in this case, all different characters, and when he said sleep with the mass, that means you married with the mass. <laughs> to marry yeah, with the mass. It's a sacred bond. Yeah. And pa Pashupati is the lord of the jungle. It's the yeah. incarnation of Shiva. Shiva, who, in of this course, case. is also Nataraja, the, 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 the lord of dance. Yeah. The god of dance called Shiva Nataraja in Bali. Or yeah. even in India too. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Sometimes in, in Bali they call also Vishnu Murti because the same as uh, Nataraja yeah. in this case. Okay. Learning about mass, uh, marriage with the mass. First, uh, when you study this mass, this is called Siwana Taraja, I mean, uh, Siddhakarya in this case, you have to study the, the bawa, the expression of the mass. You have to be able to follow, to imitate. Mm -hmm. yeah? Before you put this in your face, you have to, able to, do, to be able to do expression like this. First thing, he asked me to how open your, open your uh, teeth, mouth, and do this thing. Really get that into you know deeply, because when you put this uh, the mass in yourself, you have to do expression like this to it become to one. The, your, the the human face and the yeah. mass the become mass one like, like that. Right. So this is what we learn. Same with this mass, for example. Even though there's bulging eyes a little bit big, but you have to smile. When you put this in your face, you have to do this. So you're really feeling the expression that the mask is giving through the performance, right? And you can feel it inside as well. Transformation yeah. of the, uh, the, the soul of the mass into yourself like that. So this is what, can I have one? Okay, let's see. Uh, that is not enough, you know, when I say expression from, and this go with the movement also. 
So in the Balinese dance, topeng, you always have a standing position. I'm sitting now, but this is like a standing position. Right? So sorry, <laughs> let me move this. <laughs> so the Balinese dance, no matter what uh, style, uh, for male, uh, male uh, character, they always stand or sit with this knees turned out. Knees always turned out. Something that we found in Borobudur Temple yeah. or in Pramanan Temple in mm-hmm. Indian dancing like that. They always knees turned out. Diagonal like that. And from here, there's a concept in Balinese performance known as Ngunda Bayu. Ngunda Bayu is this distribution of energy into different parts of your body when you dance. Sometimes in your hand, very strong like this, or sometimes only simple this way, depends on the character. Sometimes here may be heavy movement, or sometimes in your foot, like that. So it's called Ngunda Bayu, yeah? Ngunda Bayu, distribution of energy into all part of your body. Okay. In this case, uh, Agam, before I use the mask, Agam, normally, for male dancer, to put hand this way, yeah, to put the hand this way. This is a bit higher, yeah, staring with your eyes, and this is a lower here, a little bit, but the main thing when you dance, because the energy is coming from here, right? Yeah. Energy yeah. coming from here, like from here, uh, the center of the, the center energy. Chakra. Yeah, yeah, chakra is it's here, all actually. with the chakra. You have play with this one, you know, you play with this one. Where do you want to bring uh, the, the in- energy, right? Uh, whether you want to bring a half here, two here, so this is the controlling over here. Okay, but this is normally the standing position of male dancing based on gambu. The old classical dance, they use for topeng later on, except probably later on they uh, stylize with the mask they use. But this is the, I, the, the standing position with strong character. Without mask, you have to open your eyes big like this. My father before even telling me how to stand and walk, and he asked me to flick my eyes. Flicking in Balinese dancing is very important. Yeah. Even though you use mask, you flick also. Yeah? This is the way he flick. One, two, three, and four, six, seven, and eight. Toward higher hand. Here too, if you have this hand, the flick is here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and one, and two. So that's a flicking for strong character. So after that one, he asked me how to uh, glance my eyes. This glancing is very important to, for expression of mad, for example. And cross your eyes. You get mad to your opponent when you're fighting in the dance drama. Yeah? You have this one. In contrary, it's a love scene. In contrary, there's a love scene also in the drama. Yeah? Uh, meeting male and female refined characters, you have to be able to flirt. Hmm. Flirt, yeah. Flirt the eyes like this. And usually, you have to put a jerking eyes, jerking head movement, like this. <laughs> so this is, you know, uh, the way how to make the expression or the, the mass or the dancing more alive like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, now back to this one. Okay, I saw you, uh, I saw you um, uh, <laughs> what is it, standing position, right, like that for me. Agam. Mm-hmm. Uh, agam, yeah, it's called agam. Agam for female, agam for male, strong, and refined, okay? When we have a strong character like this one, aside, uh, 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 you know, instead of putting the hand like this, and this turn a little bit like this, to mix style of the mass already, yeah, so. Is this open to your personal interpretation, uh, Bandam? Yeah, you have the individual very, You have your own version of that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Within the, the canon. Within, yeah. The okay. canon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have what's it called, standard, but later on you have your, you have your own uh, interpretation, you know, how good are you <laughs> going yeah. to yeah. be with the technique, because technique is very important also mm-hmm. in the dance, right? So you, you put your, your this is a Siddhartha Yomas, this is a strong character, for example. So instead of putting your hand like this as a normal part, eh, as a giant, or as a priest of the giant, they put your hand this way, mm. you know, or sometimes different one, you know, they have standard of doing that. And then when you laugh, because there's teeth like that, you have to laugh. And you can have voice. 
Dalam sini kari Medoh Manjing ngering tengah yang segar so, There's a voice too <laughs> There's a voice too To give you different character There's a strong character And when you speak about refined character The, the voice is very high falsetto voice Aduh Lucky Andy So, so yeah. you know you have to make a higher higher voice for to make a different characters in this mass or other classical Balinese dancing like that. There's so much to to remember and think about in one go. I'm well, sure. it takes it's, that, it's you know, amazing. and this is uh, you know uh, the people who excel because the people who become truly great dancers are usually recognized at early age. It's like ballet and a number of other things in the, in, in the West. If you're 21 years old and you decide you want to be a, you know, a ballet dancer, forget it. It's too late. It's right. I think to, to, yeah. And, okay, and that's that's a, this is constant you know, identification in the, in the village and things that ones that are just naturally gifted. One, some people would say perhaps it's, it's a special, you know, a special, you know, what, whatever from a sacred, sacred uh, thing, thing coming down. And that's one of the things that's also going on. There, there are different influences in, in dance and mass dances going at the moment. Is one is because traditionally it was always in village uh, from, from, from generation to generation or master to student right or mysteries because it'd be going on but since since quite some time you've also had the da- dance academy and one of the things that uh made has been 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 you know concerned yeah. about is that in the dance academy there's a big emphasis on the technique but for a large part if you talk about the mystical side of it like one of the things he was talking mm-hmm. about is that before any dancer begins dancing, they actually have to do breathing. You can, yeah. you can uh, energy, yeah, controlling every yeah, energy. The, the, okay, uh, let me uh, make summarize about the uh, vocabulary movement that we discuss about, right? Sure, yeah. And I said at the beginning in the Balinese dance, always there are two type of dancing, male and female dancing, right? Mm-hmm male and female dancing and then each of the character each of the dance usually there's a, a strong and refined mm-hmm. there's a male strong male refined there's a female strong and female uh, refined in this case but balinese people in uh, balinese dance in general to have four category of technical movement no, one is called agam second is called uh, walking style tandang and the third is called uh, tankis. Tankis, it is a uh, changing movement, transition movement. And then the fourth, based on the, uh, it's called the tankup. Tankup, it is the expression of different dance in the character. Let me show you one uh, standing position of male strong character. Right? Yeah. That's oh, your Our pleasure. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, when we, st- the standing can be high this high like this can be low right like that or can be sometime in the middle depending on what kind of uh, movement are you doing but mostly this way this is left this is right standing position and this is left standing position they judge by the the, the feet when you have a uh, right foot in front left foot in the back here may be uh, the way mostly here in the back so they call agam kiri in this case okay from this agam kiri, if you want to walk, right, you have to walk. Uh, the walk can be counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because uh, music and dance in Balinese topeng, in Balinese uh, uh, baris dancing or gambo, always uh, very important counting in this case. Uh, take for example, this, this, uh, this uh, dance is baris warrior dance. That's the a, that's a music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ir nang dong neng tong nang ne dong sir neng no neng tong nang neng dong sir. This is the melodic line, melody that you follow. The dancer must understand the melody. Take for example in the top end. So male and female drum together to playing like that yeah because it give you signal for uh, angsel and so on okay like now walking with that music yeah 
4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, gong, 1, 2, 3, tong, 4, yang, 4, gong, 1, 2, 3, tong, 4, yang, 4, gong, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, pur, gong, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, pur, gong, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, pur, gong, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, gong, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, gong, so, music and the movement usually is very related. So the different instruments are actually instructing you on different movements and the different timing of certain uh, movements of the dance, essentially. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you have the drum, if you want to do a angsal, for example, he give the signal to other musicians, but he have to catch up my movement. Don't 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 like that. Who follows who? Uh, in this case, the musician follow the dancer. Ah. So there's another dancing, like Legong, for example. Uh, they already set the music. The dancer follow, right? Yeah. But in this Topeng dancing, in the warrior dance, more freely movement in the barong, usually uh, the musician uh, follow the dancers. Yeah, but since the 19th century. <laughs> already? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Before that, it was the opposite way around. Uh. So like Legong, for example, they already have set yeah. the music, and we join. So that's like a that's a modern influence to have that. Well, <laughs> the, the, the Gambiar style. So, so what happened in North Bali, and that was because North Bali was Around under the yeah, yeah mm -hmm. not under the rule of the of the Dutch, and it was pacified, and it was open to the world. Whereas the kingdoms of South Bali were still very, very isolated and closed, right? Okay, and so they 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 started a new style. They started a new style of, of gamelan, but I think re regardless of which gamelan, and so it, it wasn't. It was a, It was just a sort of switch of sorts. What's important to understand too is that all dance drama, to, a toping dance, and so on, is that they don't. They don't just exist as mm -hmm. a ma mask. It's part of the total. A, t a so. total experience mm. that includes the, um, the music, it's the religious overtone, history, it's also a didactic tool to inculcate the, the people who are watching it in the values of, 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 of Balinese culture uh -huh. and, 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 and et cetera. And it's got, it's got sound, it's got smell, there's movement. It's, 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 um, it's, it's a okay. truly uh, total theatrical, uh -huh. but uh -huh. also in, on, on a, a level that you can compare to the to ancient Greek oracle uh, theaters and things like mm -hmm. that. Because sometimes we, 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 we only look at things one part of a time and poetry too because most of the all these stories they're they're spoken in poetry ancient poetry that's one of the clowns Kakawin, that yeah. Patmadi was talking Kakawin about or the, Kidong, it's called, yeah. the clowns are the ones because the princes and all the high high figures they speak in this courtly language which evolved in in 14th 15th century uh java in the court of the Maj majapite and the, you, the clowns are the local guys who speak in the vernacular so that the Balinese understand. But because very few mm -hmm. people, only learned people, ever learn the Kawi, which is, which is yeah. the, the, high the, language, the, high yeah. uh, the high language. Okay, speaking about gamelan again, uh, in Bali we have more than 30 different ensemble of gamelan. So the one that I talk about that Pak Bruce said is called gamelan gong. Now it's called Gamelan Gong Kebiar. For Topeng, usually accompanied by this Gamelan Gong Kebiar or Gong Gede, is it called? But within any Gamelan in Bali, yeah, we speak about music and then in this case, yeah, before we go into a bit about the Topeng, uh, Gamelan in, in Bali, no matter of kind of Gamelan, they always have melody, a short melody or long melody, depending on the genre. Like Legong melody is very long kind of Legong melody. A gambo melody with flute playing flute, very uh, long kind of melody. But this one, uh, for baris and for topeng, usually ostinato. The melody is called ostinato. Yeah, and the Balinese music in this case is, uh, is it's called heterophonic. What, sorry, what is ostinato? Uh, ostinato, uh, short melody, okay. four 
uh, the for cycle counting. of the melody. Cycle of the oh, melody. So, so you yeah. just say, uh, you know, you just say right, that, right. you know, da 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 da, that's a da 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 da, yeah. repeats. Um, so, you know, the, uh, and the ostinato, and then of course uh, with the gamelan or, or has the rhythm as staccato, right? Mm -hmm. Staccato is very emphasizing on this one, like that. Okay, we have melody. So. One, and so one instrument play melody usually called gener or suling or trompong, whatever the gamelan is it. But one melody, let, the same melody, will played by the other groups of instrument. Because in our gamelan in Bali, we have instrument called uh, gangse, it play the melody. Tong dang tong dang tong tang dang tong gong dang tong dang tong dang dang tong gong. We have colotomic structure. Like I said already, kempur, gong, and kajar. Tung, 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 pur, pur, gong, all repeated like that, yeah? But other, uh, other instrument play interlocking figuration. The Balinese gamelan, the one of the soul of the Balinese gamelan, male and female. Male and female in every instrument, actually, right? But then they play interlocking figuration. That means uh, hockey type, yeah? Hockey type. Take for example, tan tarin tari rante rante tarin tan tari rante 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 tarin tari rante rante tarin tan tila ante la ante la ante la ante la. The other instrument, the the male type, ten ten tolen ton telon 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 ten ten tolen ton telon ten. When you put this together, we come one melody, but it is interlocking figuration like that. It's it's a you know a layered tapestry of many many different. Different signs, uh, so, uh, and it's interesting. Yeah. Sounds it's having is is that uh, in Java and in Bali, the gamelan orchestras, which can be you know up the the gong gongede could be up to like sixty eight, people playing sixty yeah. people. sixty instruments. Right. Instrument and in Java, playing. some of them perhaps even more. In the Majapahit, maybe a hundred. Is that they're one of the few places on earth where you have true orchestras. Like in That's Europe, right. the European sy symphony or orchestras. In most other places okay. in the world, they were just small, small sorry, groups, sorry. maybe five or ten people, uh, and and not as as structured. So. That's that's you know the creation of a of a great because that's the other thing one of the themes in the book that we're talking about is that these traditions are not folkloric. That's they're they're yeah. they're they that come sense. from the ferment of great civilizations uh, that existed for over a thousand years that that mm -hmm. go back to central Java and and even even before. And layer upon layer, the Balinese uh, form, uh, as well as the Javanese mass dance, they they owe their greatest debt to the the court of the Majapahit. You know, you mm -hmm. talk uh, mm -hmm. you talk about the you know the reports. The few a few people actually visited the court and so on. And dance, drama, music was 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 an integral part mm -hmm. of the court courtly life and it was also mirrored just in Bali it was mirrored in the in the village as well whereas the the gamelons in the villages now in Bali may not be as grandiose as those that you would formally mm -hmm. see in places like Pura Payogan Ag Agong yeah. or in the in the palace of, of Dempa Dempasar they are they are still you know part of the fiber of the local local society that the local mm -hmm. people were very proud of Coming back to Topeng, actually, you know, the word Topeng already found in the Balinese inscription, epigraphy. As one, uh, uh, one uh, inscription, known as Bebetin inscription, so they found the words Atapukan or Atapuka, meaning mass, actually, in this case. So when we speak about eight, uh, 896 century year, 896. 800, yeah, 896. There was the reign of the King Kesari Warmadewa already in Bali. But we don't know exactly uh, what form of the Topeng, but already mentioned this one. And then later on, when we speak about the, this Topeng, Pancho Topeng Pajagan with story, we come back into the uh, history of Bali, Balam Waturengong. Right? That's 15th and 16th uh, century. 
this, that's what they call what, a great uh, a great culture in Bali. Right? Great culture and folk culture. We still, but even though in the villages, people are performing in the same kind of exactly. Yeah, ex, yeah, exactly. Because great great art requires great patronage. Yeah, king, right. for example, small king. You know, example. you don't. You know, the Florence wasn't 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 built because there were a bunch of local farmers, Italian farmers. Who who had a windfall profit? It was built because of this this uh, incredible society yeah. and and structure hierarchy uh, that patronized and awarded uh, the, you know the great the great artists of the the Renaissance. Okay, coming back a little bit with this one. They said the buffoon mess we never explain. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah, I explained all the idea about the uh, Topeng Sidakarya, King Sidakarya, mm-hmm. King Batu Rengong, and in the Topeng always there's a buffoon. Okay. Uh, a half mask usually. Buffoon or uh, bone dress, yeah. Uh, usually it's a half, half mask. Because this is, you have a different, different expression to give to the mask itself. Because you can use still your, your, bottom your lip, yeah. yeah, bottom lip. You can play with your bottom lip. Right, oh, yeah. uh, eyes and everything, and the way they walk with this topeng different than the other one. The one I show you very strong or another refine, but this one mostly acting movement. Even though I can, as a as a king raja, I can dance like this, but this one it has to be a different way of moving, and then it can flick. You know, mostly interpretation of different character yeah. in this case. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. this comes under which genre, but. Uh, the, the topeng buffoon. pajagan and pajagan. topeng panca, okay, yeah. yeah, because this is bon dress call. It's a buffoon always in the Balinese perf- topeng performance. Always uh, there's a meeting meeting scene, yeah, between king and prime minister and so on. There's also utusan utusan. There's a messenger to meeting from one kingdom to another kingdom, and also there's a scene called bon dress buffoon. Always. You know, after a big fight and then some fun. Male yeah. and female. Male and female. Always Often fun. deformed. <laughs> some, uh, uh, oh, you know. And, right. and it's part of a comical thing because the other thing that you have in, 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 in all the, the, the dance and drama is that you have comic relief. Yeah. Always right? like that. Because you don't, you don't just have these big, serious, lofty, you know, a, a lofty story. You have these clowns that d- engage in sh- uh, slapstick. They also often find out information, gossip in the village or wherever they're performing. And they, were, they, they channeled a sort of social criticism at the time, yeah. too. They wouldn't directly say bad things about people. But they would, in a in a way that the audience would know, oh, he's talking about that, that you know, that guy or something. Yeah. Like, there, like, therefore, the like Balinese like topeng, or Arjo or Gambo call living theater. Mm. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah, living theater. They pick up something from around, you know, the villages. For and they can be very and bawdy and naughty as well, yeah. as well because the Balinese love, you know, uh, love being uh, talking about naughty things. Yeah, tongue in cheek. You know, yeah, yeah tongue, tongue, tongue in cheek, tongue slip, stick, cheek you know? slip stick joke, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. All kinds yeah. of double entendre. Yeah. And, 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 and Therefore, so. you know, back on history of this kind of barong dance drama, we don't speak about Cholonarang yet. Cholonarang, we're using the raksasa. Raksasa is the rangda, exactly, yeah? So the Sarang is a black magic story uh, written or founded in East Java, but now they brought it to Bali. The Balinese people like it because it has black magic, content of black magic. Yeah. Therefore, then later on, there's a, a story of Cholonarang. They put as a play uh, with Barong and Rangda to show the dualistic concept, good and evil, usually like that. But Rangda itself, in the village, is also as a goddess. God Durga, yeah, God Durga or Bhairavi is a part of the God, wife of si- uh, wife of Siwa also, right? But in the play, they use uh, Chalanarang and Warong like a uh, you know contradicting character in this case. So, Symbolism of two different yeah, sides. Yeah, that's right. But the idea is harmony. Again, also. the two sides of Side. the of the of the, yeah. the the polar sides of the universe. So speaking right. about this Chalanarang play as a total theater that Pak Bruce already mentioned, right? Total theater means the Balinese theater, not only the dramatic content or dialogue, but also costume, or mask, the music, the sound, everything in, uh, you know, everything is included in that one. When uh, somebody, when a dramatic, when a, what do you call that, a, a theater person? Uh, performer? In, uh, yeah, performance. Uh, dra- 
bintang film also. Uh, yeah, they have stars. Yeah, yeah they're famous. Uh, I'm yeah, talking about of... the Celenarang sent to yeah. Paris in 1931. Mm. There was a Celenarang play uh, for the Expo in, pa in Paris in 1931. They brought the Celenarang play and Jang Air and Legong. Uh, this Celenarang impressed yeah, someone, a theater person. His name is Antona Arto in Paris. Antona Arto, uh, you know, after seeing the uh, the Balinese play, the total theater, the Jalan Narang and so on, he changed. Yeah, he changed. It had a profound effect on him. He, yeah, he, wrote, he wrote a number of essays. One of them was called, uh, he was a visionary uh, theater, theater, theater uh, person, uh, yeah. you know, Director. person. Mm -hmm. And one of it was called Théâtre et son double, theater and its like, double, with the whole idea cruelty. is that the double of theater is life. So and, and that you know, and he bemoaned the fact that European theater had gone into this sort of social, social sort of uh, psychological, and it lost mm -hmm. the magic of the, of the ancient Greek oracle theaters and things like that. And he wished to return it. And then when he saw this performance of of Balinese dancers mm -hmm. who were brought to the Paris Colonial Exposition in 1931 there. He was electrified because he had never seen anything like that. He wrote a beautiful essay about it called Le Théâtre mm -hmm. Balinese, the Th a Bal a Balinese theater. So then so. he created like a new, a new uh, experimental theater and this now become a uh, uh, become a, a source of in experiment theater in America as far as also in Indonesia. Yeah. We, we yeah. have people like Rendra and Putu Vijaya then coming back to study about this concept, yeah, yeah. concept then of the experiment theater. But we, it came really from the Chalonara play, the show by, by the Antonio yeah. Arto in Paris during that time. Bal Balinese uh, mass dance and theater had, uh, and music as well had a very profound impact Influence. on, on, on uh, you know, uh, the Western, Western artists, you know, underground artists already in the 1920s and 30s and continued on, like Colin McPhee, uh, mm -hmm. a Canadian composer who lived here for many years, wrote several, several uh, pieces which were based on uh, uh, Balinese theater, Walter Spies, the famous mm -hmm. painter. He was actually more more of a musician than he was a painter. Painting was a kind of sideline. He retuned uh, uh -huh. his piano so that he could play along and that, that he could write down the different melodies, under trying to understand the inter intricacies of, uh, and, of, of yeah. Balinese, That's true. Balinese music. And then in 1955, there was a professor from America. His name is Mantelhood. He established the department called Ethno Musicology Department. Mm -hmm. Mental Wood was studying. Mental Wood was studying in Europe first uh, through Yapkuns. Yapkuns, yeah. Yapkuns was the founder of Ethno Musicology. Yeah. 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 And then Mental Hood studied in Java in 1953, after 55. And then when he returned to America, he went to UCLA and established the uh, department called Ethnomusicology. And they brought the Japanese gamelan, a Balinese gamelan, or Chinese gamelan, or African musical ensemble to become part of the curriculum in Ethnomusicology. So I was part of that too. Back yeah, in he went to, uh, and got his degree, one yeah. of his uh, degrees at UCLA. Yeah, UCLA. UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, during my study there, I'm not only studying, but I was teaching Balinese gamelan and also teaching Balinese dance altogether. So, you know, there was the development of Balinese uh, gamelan dance in the world today. But I, I would like to talk about that, sort of the teaching of, of Balinese mask dance or sort of performing arts. Mm -hmm. And how I noticed you've written before about Bandum that people are not taught in the same way. They don't have the proper training anymore when it comes to these classical sacred dances. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? What do, you, what do you mean they don't have the proper training? And are you worried about sort of the authenticity of Balinese mask dance going into the future? No, I'm very open mm -hmm. because the concept in Balinese tradition, when you're trying to preserve the culture, uh, we have a word, it's called continuity and change. Continuity and change. We classified our dancing, including mass already, in three uh, categories. And one is called 
wali dancing. Wali is a sacred dancing, a temple dancing. It's a trance medium, right? This, uh, this dance only perform in the temple festival, in the most sacred space in the temple known as Utama Mandala. Utama Mandala can be moved outside, depend, depends on where the ceremony taken place, right? But it's called Utama Mandala. Utama Mandala. So the sacred dancing uh, performed in this case together with the priest when they perform an offering. Uh, there's a situation where gamelan play, the ganta playing by the, the, uh, the priest, yeah, the priest is called Pancha Gita actually it's called. The Pancha Gita means gamelan sound, genta sound, it's singing, the kentongan, the kukul also sounding together in the odalan like that. So that's make the sphere is really very sacred sphere because you're performing everything in the sacred space. The shrine are there, yeah, the, the, uh, the shrine are there. So there are uh, three different forms of sacred dancing already approved, uh, already recognized by UNESCO. Because nine Balinese dance has been approved, a recognition by UNESCO. Yeah, uh, the three level are the Wali, that's one. It's one called Sangyang, this is the trance medium. The trans, the sang, there are many sangyang perform, uh, form. The sangyang the dari is included in this category, the trans, yeah? the trans dancing. And the rajang, also the temple dancing, performed for the gods only. And this is another baris gede, the warrior baris uh, 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 dancing to perform for that one. Okay, That's the most sacred. Now, you know, uh, after the most sacred, then we have the... Uh, Berbali, as it's called. Berbali, also still partly sacred, but it's already moving into the storyline because like Topeng Pajagan, Topeng Panja, in this line, they're still very sacred, but they're using the story. So the people, the God can watch, and also the people who participate in the temple festival also uh, uh, part, uh, uh, participating and they're watching the woman, right? Mm -hmm. And they're moving from Berbali into Bali Balihan into more uh, profane, they're more... Uh, what do you call it? It's not unsacred. Uh, it's secular? Yes, yeah, secular. The word is secular in this case. So you, uh, from a long time ago, the Balinese people are aware about the transition, they're aware about modernization, right? So therefore, they have a classification like this. So the Bali Balihan, like uh, Pak Bruce uh, uh, said, is Kebiar, one of the uh, janger, the singing part, the janger, folk dance, included in this Bali Balian, mm -hmm. Arjo, so there are many forms that people can watch, that people can uh, enjoy uh, uh, watching in this one. Mm -hmm. So based on this classification, this old classification actually, but we reclassify again on 1971, because the word Wali, Babali, and Bali Balihan, I found in one of the script, one of the uh, naskah, one of the literature, one of the called Usano Bali. It's already the 15th century books like that, called Wawalen. Because of Wawalen, there's a, there's a transition, they call Wali, Babali, and Bali Balihan. So when you speak about you know, new creation, uh, therefore the Balinese people has the idea, has the policy uh, uh, for uh, changing of the Balinese dance or music through the continuity and change. The classical one must be uh, like a basis of the new creation. Mm, okay. New creation. Okay. Right. To, to amplify on that, I don't think it, it's not that people are taking the sacred dances uh, unseriously. It's not that. I think, and that's part of the purpose of the book in the terms of the documentation, is that the blurring of the lines between a lot of things. Because even though their class of the dances are classified in those three things, some of the dances are actually the sacred dances are performed in more kind of commercial kind of settings mm -hmm. at, at times, like the, the Sangyan Dadari, the Barong uh, Rangda dance and other ones are often, you know, they've been performed for some time uh, in, in a more commercial environment. Mm -hmm. you know, some sacred dancing now perform for tourists, for other uh, events, you know. I think the Balinese people already understand that sacred is context, sacred is, you know, not absolute. Tidak abadi, uh, sacred is change, sacred is uh, perubahan, you know. 
it's like that. So, but still, for the government, for the people of Bali, they don't want to have the sacred dancing blindly performed for tourists. Like yeah. a certain form, yes, already they transform into a new form for uh, you know tourist uh, performances, like mm. like Barong Kuntis Raya. Yeah, exactly, Barong I mean, Kuntis Raya. It's a Barong cat dancing. Uh, sorry to say that Barong Kuntis Raya is called. Barong and Chris dance now that perform in Batu Bula, in Kesiman, in Den Pasar, created by my father mm -hmm. for the tourist attraction in 1948, mm -hmm. together with Choko Tublen, the mass maker of Singapore, and also Dibia's father is the Peng dancer. The three of them to create the new form of uh, Barong for tourist performance mm -hmm. for a wisatawan. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the performance, I still trance involved. <laughs> yeah, bit. well, that's part of it. Yeah, that's <laughs> a, a, a sort of thing. Even though it's yeah. you say, oh no, 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 this is not the sacred dance, but they still do all the rituals so, and offerings yeah. that they do for the sacred dances. Yeah, you know? I, I, I just, yeah, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got just trance. Yeah. I got trance performing in Nardo, Italy, to perform hobby horse then because we did it uh, seriously. Sang Sang Yang Jara. Sang Yang Jara. Yeah. 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 Sang Yang Jara. Mm -hmm. I got trance. Really trance. And you fell into trance. Yeah. 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 Wow. See, you know, all of the musicians and other dancers trance to go with me. You know, yeah. because of the context and the performance, also a church there, a sacred space. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you never expect So, yeah, that. this is a belonging. And I think, again, with that, the, 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 it's not that we're against our. Uh, you know, change, adaptation, evolution, kriyasi baru, even though a lot of it we may not particularly be fond of. It's about knowing what it is, making sure, especially among the Balinese, is, and, and they need support from other people, not to, to mistake something for what it is not. And also in many cases, like with the photos of the mask in the book, the Balinese uh, contemporary mask makers and so have never seen them, yeah, yeah. because many of these sacred masks and other things were they they left the they left the the, the island seventy years ago, yeah. hundred years ago, right? And they're looking at them and saying uh, saying what what kind of mask is that that, that? even though some of them might even say oh no that's not Balinese, but so but they don't even but, have the context for their own work their own field of no work, exactly mm. and it's so about labeling it's about it's about understanding the differences between uh, yeah when they where, speak where, about sacred where, mass where you are exactly sacred mass they perform only within certain temple only but yeah. yeah. on and on the other yeah. villagers other people don't never see so the books is, is there to conserve and categorize and 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 sort of inform and remember sort of the right places of things just in case in the future the lines get blurred as you said and people can still go back to the book and be like oh wait wait that was the original reason that was where that came from and so that history is not sort of um sort of twisted as as time goes on essentially it's a it's mm -hmm. an it's an, a major attempt to build a, a, a structure a ranka yeah, where you can Framework. you can start mm -hmm. categorizing things. It's it's not complete. In many ways, you can say a lot more work uh, sure. remains to be done, yeah. but at least it 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 gives that that sort of overarching uh, you know st structure so that you start knowing where 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 things things yeah. belong. Right, and the book itself is not only uh, providing you about the mass as a material aspect, but also we speak about the history, function, and also the dancer, and we speak about the mass the original, maker, yeah, and the, the process of so. making mass, all of those, uh, uh, you know, in total included in the book itself. Mm -hmm. So when people, next people, when they want, they read this mass, they might remember, oh, the sense of sacred mass from Trunyan, they never seen it before, right? Mm -hmm. But at least to this information, they will appreciate more, I guess, yeah. they are yeah. belong to... The context to context. the arts as well, where mm -hmm. a lot of people just see a performance and visually it might be amazing, but, you know, without the story behind it, a lot of this stuff uh, is, is shallow, right? Mm -hmm. So giving that context, I think, 
makes watching something way more special and way more deep and way more interesting. Totally. And hopefully, you know, with, with an, a greater understanding, there's a greater appreciation for all the things that people see around them. And they said, and that a mask is not just an object, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a, a bridge or it's a, it's a piece of art. Because it's, it's sort of two, it's two areas of art. It's the maker and then also the performer. So, and having that mask being represented as a double sort of masterpiece in two, in two different arts, essentially. Yeah. To our school in Bali called Institute of the Arts of Indonesia, ASTI, called, it was called ASTI, Academy Sanitari Indonesia. And then it's called Sekolah Tinggi Sanitari Indonesia. Then Pasano is called EC. I think this kind of book will become, uh, you know, very useful as a reference mm -hmm. for, uh, for a research when they do a research on other object of the arts, probably this one is the reference for, for them. And also when they're creating new mass, contemporary and new mass, modern mass, probably this is one of the uh, nice resource, you know, yeah, for the foundation, the, of, the work foundation of work like yeah, that. To, to make, you know, because, you know, it's, it's interesting, the reactions of different people, Balinese, foreigners, mm -hmm. and so on. That maybe they think, oh, mask dance, there's three of them. You just put one rangda mask mm -hmm. and one this one, or clown mask and things like that. And they, they see the, 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 the size and the, and the breadth of the book, and it sort of makes you rethink, and you say, well, this is not only uh, weighty in regard of the number of kilos, yes. but yes. also, yes. Well, yes. But also yes. in, the, in, the, in the depth and 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 uh, you know and and the history well it's and got so breadth and things. depth i would yeah. say yeah, yeah. i hope so exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, exactly it's, it's making it's, mass it's multi and uh, multi-dimensional mm -hmm. and that the, and that it deserves more attention and this is only one of many things like this mm -hmm. there are many aspects yeah. of indonesian traditional culture that have been overlooked or dealt with only in a superficial fashion mm -hmm. in, in, in most of the islands, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, this needs to be done across you know? all the sure. islands, across all the arts, across all the sort of well, right. cultures. Like, so, like yeah. the president Jokowi said in his... Uh, uh, why, why don't we have, why don't we show the, the book, show yeah. the book yeah. here, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. president mm -hmm. of Indonesia, okay. Jokowi, yeah, Jokowi giving the introduction of the Absolutely, book. Absolutely, yeah. He forward. expressed like what he said actually, for this is a source of other topping from other islands, you know. Mm -hmm. Then he was hoping scholars or academicians from other islands of Indonesia, Java, Bali, Kalimantan, write something, book, you know, as a model like this when they speak about their own mass or other dance tradition. Yeah. Right? And a lot of it depends on patronage again. A book like this is not cheap to make, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And we didn't, we didn't make, we, we will never see a cent from it. We dedicated all our time absolutely without ever thinking about making money. It's just in terms of printing and all these other sort of things, the side expenses that, that, that you get. Right? Yeah. Well, this is four so, years of research, you know, exploration and yeah. study, visiting museum <laughs> everywhere in Indonesia, you know. Uh, so. And also you got the photographer Dodi Obeng and your designer Nilu Ketut uh, Sukarniasi. So it's sort of a team effort, effort to. Absolutely. Yeah. Without them, we could, you know, we could never. It's it's been truly uh, a great team effort that mm -hmm. every everybody has contributed equally uh, and and unselfishly, selfishly and, and right. uh, including my wife as a dancer yeah, and a choreographer. Yeah, you know, and Marlo, Marlo, Marlo is helped, too. You know, so, we've, we have also have had support from multiple people. People. So the books, yeah, divided into, into two volumes, right? Yeah. So this first volume about the history, story, function, form, the yeah, dramatic structure of the, the, of the topeng, including the genre that we speak about, yeah, the nine genre. Maybe we have 11 genre in Bali already. Mm -hmm. We keep two more for the next book with, yeah. with, yeah. with uh, Bruce because we never talk about the contemporary new topeng in Bali. It has been you know, going on for a long time. So, and Panji story also we need to, yeah. to write in, for the future, maybe the second book. 
I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's because one of the discoveries is people say, oh, they, they, in Bali, they never perform the Panji story. Panji so, is one of the great, great stories from Java of a hero named right. Panji. Right. Uh, from, mm -hmm. It's from the 11th century, from the, the, yeah, the, the, Kediri, the, king, uh, Kediri, yeah, the Kediri Yeah, the Kediri kingdom. And, uh, and, uh, and then we found masks with the names, uh, yeah. you know, of Panji on the back in the yeah. old collection. So it's clear they were making masks of Panji, which meant they were performing with yeah. them as well. So it's the next research should be direction that way, you know, because Panji also, there's a king of Panji in Bali, right? Yeah. <laughs> from uh, from uh, uh, Buleleng, from North Bali. So we have to do more deeply research. Maybe for next our books will be Panji story mass culture mass culture in the story of Panji, right? Yeah. Mass culture story of Panji and also contemporary uh, Bali mass. There are lots of them already, you yeah. know, created. I, th I think these two volumes here will be enough homework for people to wait <laughs> for the sequel. Yeah, no, we, can, <laughs> we have time. There's other subjects like, yeah, uh, you know, Jacobi asked for a book on Javanese and other type of mass yeah. traditions. The government, because it's the other thing, is that this is completely self-funded. Yeah, that's yeah, right? true. Uh, because you, 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 you ask, you, are, you, know, the, you know, the government so far has, has not really come up and, you know, and, and maybe, maybe that will time. change. <laughs> maybe maybe that next it'll time. Change. <laughs> Having seen the yeah. yeah. quality, yeah. they'd be like, well, this is something. So the second book is... The second book yeah, is the gallery, it's, it's, it's all different masks from all over, all over yeah. the world. Balinese yeah. masks. Kind of yeah. yeah. The mask. So we are both bringing the taksu of Bali back to Bali. And we found more in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. You know, they sort of pop out because once the word's out, how about this mask and how about this, this mask, mask yeah. and sort That's of true. like That's that. You know? yeah. And luckily also, you know, after we taken picture of few masks, few mask group in Bali, like from Klungkung, we know it the, the bagus Kaut is name. Uh, they have a treasure of mass from 1930s, 1920s, you know. After we take the picture for this book, and the owner passed away. Wow. Yeah, that's another thing because it's, it shows the fragility of this, the, the, the transitional of, generation, you know, the people who from, let's say, the pre-colonial uh, pre period mm -hmm. until, until the, the colonial yeah. and now the post post, uh, uh, you know, independence, the early Indonesian Republic and so on, is that a lot of people are gone yeah. and, and more disappear all the time. So, and we were lucky because not only taking picture and doing interview with the master, but, you know, our team also sneak around with some video with it. Mm. So we still have the video of the bagus caught, you know, the master yeah. throw of Topeng from Klungkung. So next time, why not not only writing about the mass that we got from them, but also writing uh, autobiography of that. that exactly. Mass. Yeah. Um, on that note, I mean, you, is this last sort of generation, Pat Bruce, you mentioned to me, is, I mean, Pat Bandam, you're also one of these links of between sort of the, the you were talking about this before, Pat Bruce, about sort of the, the traditional roots and then modernity. I think, Pat Bandam, you're... Uh, and mm -hmm. I think you mentioned the part Dibia as well before. Yeah, and, and exactly. the two of you are sort of upholding this traditional link to the traditions. Well, they're, they're, they're very interesting because they both, they both learned in the, in, completely in the traditional environment, right? That was before the dance academies and they weren't going to that. So they learned, you know, from handed down father to son with the great masters and other things. And they became uh, quite, uh, because they, you, you became recognized. They were, became stars early on. Yeah. They were traveling around the island, performing for whatever, at least food and drink at all these temple festivals and so on. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, Made, Made has spoken about it as one of his most wonderful uh, periods in, in, in his life. Yeah. And then he was, you know, pushed to go to the university, go abroad, and he has, you know, played many, many different roles. So Pat Madi uh, and, and Wayan Dibia, too, mm -hmm. uh, they, they understand both sides mm -hmm. of, of the world. It's interesting, you know, and I see that a lot of times is that the time that I came to Bali and started immersing myself in Balinese culture, 
there were a certain number of Balinese that went, went to the West and started immersing themselves you know, as ambassadors of their own culture, but immersing themselves in, in, in Western, Western culture. And that, it's a kind of unique phenomenon which has allowed us to do this kind of, 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 of book, mm-hmm. right? Because, uh, because and I think it's also very important is that, you know, that, that, that the Indonesians also participate in these kind of, of, of projects, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and I want to stimulate, because there are a lot of talented Indonesian scholars and, uh, around, but sometimes it's that they, they you know, they, they're not, they haven't yet f- mm-hmm. really fully reached their potential. Maybe for different reasons, or you know, and nobody has really, you know, it's like putting them to test and, and, and fire. You know, it's like uh, that's also one of the things when Pat Madi was learning to dance, his 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 father was a hard teacher. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't say, oh, it's my favorite son. Mm-hmm. You know, he can yeah. he can sleep late or something sure. like that. It was up and say, do, do this one do hour that. only Wrong. picking ice movement, you know, right? Yeah. Wrong. You're, that's wrong. Do it better again, again. That's the old, you know? old method of old teaching. Old yeah. You know, really you know? Yeah. words, words. Yeah. 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 Let well, me, yeah. Sure. Let me uh, continue a little bit about the tra- the legacy of me and Pak Di Beer, mm-hmm. right? So uh, I mentioned already, uh, Pak Di Beer's father, his name is Wayan Griel. My father's name Kredak. They are partner in doing Penasar in Topeng and Arjil. Penasar means the buffoon advisor, it's like that one. Mm-hmm. They have strong uh, connection already between my father and uh, Divya's father, okay? They both master of Arjil during this time. They were the best Arjil uh, Arja teachers, creating new style of Arjil also in Bali because my father he has a school of thought called Arjil style. One of the other style in Bali, uh, the two of them, one is Kramas and one is Singapadu. Uh, this Singapadu is very strong everywhere now in, in Bali. My father was the, the maestro for that one. Okay? Uh, then, uh, Pak Griya has a son, his name is Dibir. Right? My, uh, my father, Made Kredak, has a son, his name is Made Bandam. His father passed when he was young. But Dibir's father passed when he was young. After a performance, then he passed away. And my father took him as an adopted son also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and then he, I continuing my study at the Conservatory Music and Dance in Bali. I became a teacher after three years at that school. I pick up the beer to become a student over there too. So, and, you know, and that was a chance for me to study in America. After that one, I gave a recommendation, you know, who's the next person to study in America for this kind of theater and dance and music. So the beer was one of them. So there was a, uh, what do you call, there's a legacy like that between me and Dibir. Uh, of course, Dibir is one of the maestro now, and mm-hmm. he's a professor also, teaching at the uh, Institute of the Arts of Indonesia in Denpasar, even though he's retired now, but he's still very active in doing performances like that. Well, we're very lucky to have you both still teaching the younger generations, and also to have you both to create such an amazing sort of compendium and collection of the masks of Bali. So thank you both for, I, we could talk for so long and we've already gone more than expected, but I've still have, I've only covered half the questions of where we could go, but for that, we'll just say, please buy the book, Masks of Bali Between Heaven and Hell by E. Made Bandam and Bruce Carpenter. So um, thank you both for being here. Thank you both for your really interesting, insightful discussion and explanations is super intriguing and and i'm sure it'll uplift a lot of interest in the art thank you both thank you for having us Thank you so much for listening or watching to this episode of the Now Bali podcast with two amazing guests. Links to Masks of Bali can be found in the show notes for those interested in purchasing this important and historical book. 
Otherwise, if you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, share, or follow us on social media. This is Eddie Spears. See you next time. Thank you.